Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about how you can integrate Google Authentication in Blazor WebAssembly applications. First, I'm going to create an app on Google's developer console which will give me the client ID and client secret and I'm going to use that in my app settings in the server side. And we'll follow the same steps that we followed for Twitter and Facebook authentication. We'll add a package, authentication package for Google in our server project. We'll add Google authentication support in our startup class and then we'll add a web API call in the controller for user to log in with Google's account. And then we'll add a button on the client side, which is going to call this web API on the server side. And once we follow all these steps for a pleasing chat application, we should be able to log in with our Google's account in our application. So let's go ahead and make these changes. To create a new project, I'm going to go to console.developers.google.com and click on create project. That's going to take me to the screen where I can name my project. I'm going to name my project as blazing chat project. And then click on create. You can select organization. I don't have any organization set up. So I'm just going to click on create here. That's going to create a project for us and will take us to the dashboard of that project. Here we'll have to first create an app and then we can create credentials for that app. To create an app, I'm going to go to OAuth consent screen. And here I'm going to select the external user because we want any user with Google account to log in in our placing chat application. So I'm going to select external user and then click on create. And then it's going to ask me the name of the app, which is going to be placing chat. And then we'll add the user support email, which is going to be my email address. And then I'm going to select the app logo for my application, which is going to be US Drive. Uh, logo here and then uh, we'll have to select the application home page privacy policy and terms and conditions i'm gonna select my app home page as curiousstripe.com and paste it here and then uh, privacy policy i'm gonna get it from termsfeed.com we created privacy policy and terms and conditions when we integrated twitter authentication and i'm gonna grab the same privacy policy from that and put it here and terms and conditions and put it here then it's going to ask us to add authorized domains which are qsstripe.com and termsfeed.com so let's go ahead and add those i'm going to select qsstripe.com and add that domain and then termsfeed.com i'm going to select that and add that domain too and then developers contact information, which is going to be QSDrive at gmail.com. I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to click on save and continue. So when I click on save and continue, it's going to tell us that we need to verify our application because we selected the app logo. And the verification process is not difficult. You just have to follow some forms and then add information and your application gets verified. I'm going to click on continue here. And we do not need to add or remove any scopes on this app to get the email address of the user. So I'm going to click on save and continue. I'm not going to enter any option information. And when I click on save and continue, it's going to create the app for me. And then we can go back to our dashboard here. You can also prepare your application for verification here and you know follow the process to verify your account. I'm not going to do that today, but I'm going to go back to dashboard here. And now we have our app ready. We'll have to create credentials for this app. For that, I'm going to go to credentials tab here and then click on create credentials and go to OAuth client ID. This is going to ask me what kind of application you're building. We are building a web application. So I'm going to select that. And then it's going to ask us the OAuth client name for our application. So I'm going to select that as Blazing Chat. And then we're going to need to add authorized redirect URL. So this is the URL that that's where Google is going to send the tokens and our package, which is Microsoft ASP.NET Core 
authentication pool that's going to handle those tokens and will give us users information so let's go ahead and add that url which is going to be http as local host 5001 sign in pool and then i'm gonna click on create that's going to create my credentials and it'll give me the client id and client secret id and this is what we're going to use in our project to integrate google's authentication to get started with making code changes i'm gonna add two keys in my app settings or json on the server side for that i'm gonna go to my server side project and open my app settings or json and here i'm gonna add two keys which are going to be for google's client id and its client secret and we can get those values from the project dashboard and go to credentials tab and then we can get the client id and client secret from here so i'm gonna grab the client id and set it to this field and then get the client secret and set it to this field then i'm gonna need to add a package which is going to be microsoft acp.net core authentication cool just like we added twitter and facebook authentication i'm gonna add google authentication here and then i'm gonna rebuild my project so that i could use some of the extension methods from this package so let's rerun the project then i'm going to need to add google's authentication services in my startup class for that i'm going to go to my startup class and add google's authentication services as one of the services in the project for that i'm going to add some code here which is going to be add google in which i'm setting google's options and it has client id and client secret as the fields which are getting the values from the app settings that we just added so we added these two keys here with its values and it will get those values and assign to google options for authentication service that we add once i'm done with that then i'm going to need to add a web api in my controller for that i'm gonna go to my user controller and just like we added for facebook and twitter i'm gonna add another web api which is going to be for google and i'm going to call it as google sign in this is going to be google sign in too and instead of using facebook's default authentication scheme i'm going to need to use google's default authentication scheme and we'll have to bring in a namespace for this so i'm going to hit control dot and add a using statement which is going to be authentication google once i'm done with that then i'm going to need to add a button which is going to call this web api for that i'm going to go to my client project and open up my login page and here we added facebook and twitter so i'm going to copy facebook button and change its style and the text to google so i'm going to say this is going to be google style is going to be google the method that we're going to call is going to be google sign in and we are signing in with google so let's change its text too we'll have to add a method which is going to be google sign in so i'm gonna copy facebook sign in method and add another method and grab this text and set the value to its method and whenever this button gets clicked this method will get called and we want to call the web api that we just added so i'm going to change this facebook sign in to google sign in and that's all you need to do to integrate google authentication in place of web assembly application let's run this and see if that works or not currently i do not have the google button i'm going to refresh my page and apply my changes it will add that google button and now if i click on it it's going to ask me if it's okay to continue with blazing chat application i'm gonna say yes and select my google account and that's going to let me log in with my google's account in blazing chat application with drive at gmail.com email address so this is how you can integrate google's authentication services in your blazer WebAssembly application in the next section i'm going to talk about how you can fix the issue that we had so even if i log in with google's authentication i see john smith's information here so let's go ahead and fix that in the next section 
The reason why we see John Smith's information on the profile page even after logging in with Curious Drugs Google account is because John Smith's user ID is hard coded in get current user web API. Let's go ahead and fix that. For that, I'm going to go to my user controller and find get current user web API. And here I'm checking if the user is authenticated, which in our case it is because we are logging in with external user like Twitter, Facebook, and Google. Then I'm checking if that user's email address is present in my database or not. And if it is not, then I'm setting John Smith's user ID instead of inserting that record in the database. And this is where the problem is. Let's go ahead and add that user in the database so that next time when we log in, we get the user which is logging in as external user instead of John Smith's user ID. For that, I'm going to add some code which is going to insert a new user in the database. It's going to create new current user and it's going to set the user ID to whatever the max value of the user ID plus one. And then I'm assigning the email address from its claims type. So we'll get the email address of the user of external user in the claims type email. And I'm going to change this to email too because we don't want to have name here and email here, right? So I'm going to sync that. So that should work. We are also going to change the claims type for our application user too. We were using claims type name. I'm going to change that to email too. And then if I, once I assign that email address and assigning password to encrypted value of the email address, we don't even need to store password for external user because Google, Facebook, and Twitter is authenticating for us. We don't have to do it, but I'm storing password to encrypted value of the email address here. And then I'm setting the source to external and then adding that current user and users and saving that context so that that record gets inserted in my database. Now let's run this and see if our custom Twitter, Facebook, and Google authentication work together or not. For that, I'm gonna stop the project and we run it. I'm gonna log out here and try to log in with Twitter and see if that works or not. I get logged in in my Blazing Chat application with Twitter. I can set the first name and last name. It's not loading John Smith's information anymore. So I'm gonna set the value to curious. Last name is drive, why not? And about me is something about me and save that record and that record gets saved if i try to log in with facebook i should get logged in as curious drive and see curious drives information here if i get logged in with google then also i should be able to see curious drives information here if i log in with john smith i should see john smith's information here and if I log in with Julius Caesar, I should see Julius Caesar's information here. So this is how you can have custom Twitter, Facebook, and Google authentication work together in Blazor WebAssembly application. If you run into any issues, you can find my code on this GitHub link. I'm gonna mention this link in the video description. You can check the 15th episode. That's where I'm done with all the authentications. And you know, compare your code with this folder here. And you can also ask questions in the video comments here. I'll be very happy to answer those questions. And if you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you soon. Bye.